Hello and welcome to this AIM video on how to set up a track map in your Race Studio analysis software uh, for better data analysis. And so in previous videos, as part of this series, we've looked at how to set up the measures graph so you can start spotting trends in your driving. But one of the challenges that often appears through the analysis of the graph data is where exactly on track is this particular point here or here? And so many people will know that this happens to be turn one uh, because it's the first turn on the track. But as you go through the anatomy of a lap, especially on some of the bigger tracks that have multiple corners, it's very interesting to be able to overlay where the graph is on the actual track itself. And so to be able to do that in the Race Studio analysis software, what we need to do is we need to be able to create a map. And so typically, if you want to have a map uh, show up, there's a button here, but um, it's grayed out right now. And the reason it's grayed out is that there are no instances of a map for this track um, in the software right now. There's not, no one's created a map. And so we're going to do that by going um, to create one from the map manager. So right over here at the top, there's a button that says map. And if I click there, there's two options. First is map manager, which is you can go in and see if there is a map. We know there isn't one um, for this particular uh, track. So we're gonna go into new. And if we click there, what it's gonna do is using the GPS knowledge that it has, is it's going to represent um, the track overall and show you that track as to where it is. And so um, this will always show um, the uh, fastest lap to be able to create the actual track from. And um, what uh, the AIM software typically does is it demonstrates right-hand turns in red uh, sections, so the right-hand corners and the left-hand corners in blue. And so you can see here that um, it's showing a few of the more pronounced corners in red and blue, but some of the, the, the um, corners that are um, just uh, very slight are still represented as straight. We'll look at that in a little bit detail uh, as to how to change that later on. But for now, we're just going to call this, um, let's say, uh, Silverstone uh, National. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on OK. Now what's going to happen is the map's going to change slightly. And if you remember, oh, the graphs are going to change slightly. If you remember from our um, map manager, uh, red was represented as um, right-hand turns and uh, blue was left-hand turns that are there. And so we can now see that overlay on top of the particular graphs. But again, the most important thing for many is that now all of a sudden, uh, a very important button has um, enabled, and that is up here, which is looking at show the track map. So if I now click on that, now I can see the track map. And so what happens is, is if we follow this little cursor that is here, as I move throughout the track, you can see that it's representing where those particular points are. So you can see each of the corners, um, each of the straightaways and start getting an understanding of where uh, you are on the track. And so a very interesting and useful feature on the track map uh, functionality. Later on uh, in this uh, video series, we will look at split reports where we'll look at how do we want to actually break that track into segments that we can then analyze further. But for the purposes of today, this track map was designed to be able to help identify as to where um, you are on track. But that's not the only map you can use. As um, the devices from AIM are capturing a lot of GPS information, they're also creating an overlay and an understanding of your position on track as relates to the overall um, location uh, and position. And so you can see that in more detail uh, in the software as well. So if uh, we're going to click on another button, it's going to actually open up another um, tab down here at the bottom as part of our views. And that is the one here called GPS. If you click here, now all of a sudden we can now see that data in more interesting information. Now we don't need the track map on here, so we can just close it. But what we can start to have a look at is we can look at the position of both of the laps on the track itself. And so if you notice, we're still looking at the 105 and the 10, um, you know, six sort of 105.6, uh, 105.7 laps. And what I can actually do is move around uh, the, the map by holding down the mouse button and be able to have a look at that view. Now, the reason this is very useful is that oftentimes just knowing driver input 
um, isn't enough to be able to identify um, sort of areas of uh, gain and loss on track. But what we can do is we can get an understanding of where the car was positioned to be able to give us an idea as if that driver has taken a different line through a certain corner, which may have improved their performance. And so one of the things that we can see here is that there are glimmers here of where this red fastest lap has got a slightly different line to the blue. Now it's hard to see here, so what we can do, and we can do it through the buttons at the top, but I'm just going to use the mouse by scrolling uh, up and down on the, uh, the mouse wheel here, is just to zoom in on different points on the track. Now if we look at turn one, we're now starting to have a look at uh, different pieces of information. And one of the things that we mentioned in the previous video was um, if we looked at uh, what was happening here in turn one, and we're going to do a lot more analysis uh, later on, um, but at the same time, it's good just to be able to start joining the dots. We identified that on the time and distance here that the blue car was slower um, through the first corner, which to the tune of losing about three tenths, almost four tenths um, of a second in that particular point. Now, if we look up here, we can see that it's the driver was able to take more speed through that corner. But if we look at longitudinal here, it's harder to see um, necessarily what was happening. In fact, the red line broke a little bit later, was carrying a little bit of speed because you can see this is later in the lap here. So it's like, OK, well, it's very, very slight in terms of adjustment. But let's have a look at the GPS map and see if there was a slightly different variation. And what we can see is here the um, difference in line is that the blue line stayed out longer and had a later turn in, whereas the um, red line turned in earlier but used a lot more of the track on exit, which you can see here, which is why the lines are so diverged here as you exit the track. And so it was able to use a lot more of the track on the outside, which may have been part of the reason that more speed was rolled through that particular corner. And we'll look at more analysis later on, but having the GPS map as well is very useful. So. To close out this video, there are two options that are available to you in terms of mapping. The first is to look at the, uh, the measures graph and to be able to load a map and that enables this feature here to be able to see the cursor as to where you are on the map as represented in the graphs. And the second thing is, is to click on the GPS button up here, which will load up this particular point where moving the mouse and zooming in and out will give you a different understanding of where somebody is on track. And so that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.